Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Dubin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 72. This is the Friday, October 1st, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, Apples Never Fall by Lane Moriarty. The Delaney siblings suspect their father of causing the disappearance of their mother. At number two, The Jailhouse Lawyer by James Patterson and Nancy Allen. A young lawyer winds up in an Alabama jail that remains mysteriously crowded. At number three, Daughter of the Morning Star by Craig Johnson, the 17th book in the Longmire Mystery Series. A player on the Lame Deer Lady Stars high school basketball team receives threats. At number four, Vince Flynn, Enemy at the Gates by Kyle Mills. Anthony Cook, an autocratic president, distrusts Mitch Rapp, who is working to uncover a traitor. And at number five, Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. Ray Carney, a family man who sells furniture on 125th Street gets a new clientele made up of vicious and unsavory characters. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, also from the New York Times, of course, at number one, Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. The Washington Post journalists detail the dangers and challenges during the transition to the Biden presidency. At number two, Vanderbilt by Anderson Cooper and Katherine Howe. The CNN host and descendant of the Vanderbilt family charts the rise and fall of this American dynasty. At number three, American Marxism by Mark R. Levin. The Fox News host gives his take on the Green New Deal, critical race theory, and social activism. At number four, Yours Cruelly Elvira by Cassandra Peterson. The actress details the moments from her life and career that shaped the creation of her character Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. That's a perfect one considering Halloween is this month. And rounding out the top five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. Our first recommended read for this week is the new novel All's Well by Mona Awad. Awad returns with a brilliant noir comedy about art and illness. Miranda Fitch is the dedicated director of an underfunded university theater studies department. She's perpetually in pain, a debilitating but medically invisible pain that's led her into the nightmarish fog of daily handfuls of painkillers. But Miranda won't let her mysterious ailment, or anything else, stop her from putting on a legends-making performance of Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well. Not a student actor-led coup, nor accusations of scandal, nor a distracting romance with a set designer. Nothing will stop her. Miranda is assisted in her quest by three mysterious beneficiaries 
she meets at a local watering hole. As the story unfolds, Miranda becomes increasingly powerful and out of touch with reality, all accumulating in one wild opening night performance. Iwad's characters are deliciously over the top and impossible to forget, as is the author's gift from morbid humor. The real magic of this novel lies in Awad's ability to draw the Shakespearean irony out of contemporary tragedy. Were he writing today, Shakespeare would surely have something to say about the opioid crisis, the pitiful state of the arts in higher education, and the chronic medical ignorance of female illness. Endlessly thought-provoking and not to be missed. And that is the starred book list review. I haven't read that one yet, but it's definitely going on my reading list. Our second recommended read for this week is the new nonfiction title Vanderbilt, The Rise and Fall of an American Dynasty by Anderson Cooper and Katherine Howe. New York Times bestselling author and journalist Anderson Cooper teams with New York Times bestselling historian and novelist Catherine Howe to chronicle the rise and fall of a legendary American dynasty, his mother's family, the Vanderbilts. When 11-year-old Cornelius Vanderbilt began to work on his father's small boat, ferrying supplies in New York Harbor at the beginning of the 19th century, no one could have imagined that one day he would, through ruthlessness, cunning, and a pathological desire for money, build two empires, one in shipping and another in railroads, that would make him the richest man in America. His staggering fortune was fought over by his heirs after his death in 1877, sowing familial discord that would never fully heal. Sorry about the cell phone interruptus there. Getting back to the book, The Vanderbilts, after the founder of the family fortune passed, that being Cornelius Vanderbilt, of course, his son, Billy, doubled the money left by the man known as the Commodore, and subsequent generations competed to find new and ever more extraordinary ways of spending that money. By 2018, when the last Vanderbilt was forced out of the breakers, the 70-room summer estate in Newport, Rhode Island, that Cornelius's grandson and namesake had built, the family would have been unrecognizable to the tycoon who started it all. Now the Commodore's great-great-great-grandson, Anderson Cooper, joins with historian Catherine Howe to explore the story of his legendary family and their outsized influence. Cooper and Howe breathe life into the ancestors who built the family's empire, basked in the Commodore's wealth, hosted lavish galas, and became synonymous with unfettered American capitalism and high society. Moving from the hard scrabble wharfs of old Manhattan to the lavish drawing rooms of gilded Fifth Age Avenue, from the ornate summer palaces of Newport to the courts of Europe and all the way to modern day New York, Cooper and Howe wryly recount the triumphs and tragedies of an American dynasty unlike any other. Written with a unique insider's viewpoint, this is a rollicking, quintessentially American history, as remarkable as the family it so vividly captures. And it's kind of soap opera-ish, so if you like nonfiction that kind of reads like fiction, check out the book, The Vanderbilts. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a light historical mystery. It's called Death at the Crystal Palace by Jennifer Ashley and it's also a historical mystery. The audiobook is narrated by Anne-Marie Pizia. Set in 1882, bestseller Ashley's 
delightful fifth below stairs mystery opens at London's Crystal Palace, where Lady Covington, a wealthy widow with four grown children, seeks out Cat Holloway, a cook employed in the home of a lord, after a mutual friend introduced them at the palace earlier. Lady Covington, who feels unwell and can trust no one in her immediate family, fears she's being poisoned. And she wants Cat, who has a reputation as a crime solver, to identify the culprit. Cat enlists the aid of her charming suitor, criminal investigator Daniel McAdam, who confirms that Lady Covington is indeed in danger. When Lady Covington's daughter-in-law dies, after ingesting delicacies meant for her ladyship, Inspector McGregor of Scotland Yard investigates, assisted of course by Cat, who uses her culinary expertise to put the pieces together before the murderer can strike again. Well-drawn supporting characters and logistical details of running a prosperous household complement the intricate plot. Downton Abbey fans will be delighted. And on a reader's note, if you'd like to start reading or listening to the series at the beginning, the first book is called Death Below Stairs. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new novel, Provenance, by Carla Lorino. The audio is read by Aaron Bennett. Los Angeles interior designer and former foster kid, Kendall Green, is in high demand, both for her impeccable eye and for her uncanny ability to uncover the provenance of any piece. But for all her success, skyrocketing costs have put her California home and her business in jeopardy. Then, an unexpected inheritance provides a timely solution. A grandmother she never knew has left her a group of historic properties in a tiny Colorado town on the edge of ruin. To young untried Mayor Gabriel Brandt, Jasper Lake is more than another small town. It's the place that saved his life. Now, seeing the town slowly wither and die, he's desperate to restore it to its former glory. Unfortunately, his vision is at odds with a local developer who wants to see the town raised and rebuilt as a summer resort. He's sure that he can enlist the granddaughter of one of its most prominent former citizens to his cause until he meets Kendall and realizes that not only does she know nothing of her own history, she has no interest in reviving a place that once abandoned her. In order to save his beloved town, Gabe must first help Kendall unravel the truth of her own provenance, and Kendall must learn that in order to embrace the future, sometimes you have to start with the past. Moving on to our streaming recommendations, our first recommendation is the 1999 film, All About My Mother, directed by Pedro Amodovo and starring Cecilia Roth, Marissa Paredes, and Candela Pena. This passionate, wise, and deeply felt drama from the writer and director Pedro Amadovar won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film, and understandably so. It's one of his finest and funniest films, a love letter to the stage and those who inhabit it. Telling a story with enough buried secrets and stunning turns to recall Douglas Sirk and Tennessee Williams, Amadovar follows Manuela, an actress turned nurse, as the loss of her son leads her on a heart-wrenching and occasionally gut-busting journey back into her colorful past. 
Penelope Cruz co-stars. That overview is from the New York Times. The movie does have Spanish dialogue with English subtitles. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the newly released home video Broadway musical Come From Away, directed by Christopher Ashley, starring Petrina Bromley, Jen Colella, and Elon Grant. Apple TV Plus secured the rights to show this popular Broadway show in full. The musical tells the story of the residents of Newfoundland who looked after Americans whose planes were diverted during 9-11. The special is shot in a similar style to Disney Plus's Hamilton and was filmed during the production's first show back after the pandemic shut down. So if you like Hamilton, check out Come From Away. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is the limited series Mayor of Easttown, created by Brad Inglesby, starring Kate Winslet, Julianne Nicholson, and Gene Smart. When movie stars play on glamorous characters, the results are usually great or horrific. For every Nomadland with Frances McDormand's graceful turn as a woman scraping by financially on the road, there is a blight like Hillbilly Elegy, with Glenn Close twanging and condescending away as a hard scrabble country granny. Kate Winslet does much more than get it right as the title character in Mare of Easttown. She is gloriously real as a police detective trying to hold her personal life together in the small Pennsylvania town where she grew up. The HBO series is a dynamic portrait of a woman grappling with her troubled family and friends and her own buried grief all wrapped up in an absorbing crime drama. Over the years, Winslet has made stellar choices, including the TV series Mildred Pierce, and most recently the film Amamite. This new series continues an amazing run, and that is the BBC review. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week is season seven of The Brokenwood Mysteries. In series seven of this delightful New Zealand mystery, detectives Mike Shepard, Kristen Sims, and Sam Breen investigate the murder of an antique show host, a death at a health retreat, a deadly bank robbery, a killing at a farmer's market, a fatal fire at a historic cinema, and a 1970s theme party that turns lethal. This is a terrific series if you haven't seen it. There are six episodes to season seven, which means if you haven't used any of your Hoopla credits for the month, you can use all six of them and check out season seven of the Broken Wood Mysteries. And if you have other cards in the family, just FYI, the first six seasons are also available through Hoopla. And if you like DVDs, they are all available within the Southern Tier Library System too. It can be requested through StarCat or by calling the library. Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m. and may also be found on the Southeast Steuben County Library's YouTube channel. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. Send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at S-T-L-S dot org. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at sscLibrary.org. And through our website, you can find a whole host of information. There's our calendar of events, access to all the library's catalogs of print materials and digital items, and much more. StarCat and its companion app, 
book mine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, which encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. StarCat is found online at StarCat, S-T-A-R-C-A-T, dot S-T-L-S dot org. And you can download the companion app BookMind to your mobile device if you'd like quick access to the catalog at all times. The Digital Catalog and its companion app, Libby. The Digital Catalog is found online at stls.overdrive.com and it's available to all cardholders from all Southern Tier Library System member libraries, just like StarCat. You can check out ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos through the Digital Catalog. And if you prefer to access the catalog through an app, go to your app store and download the Libby app to your mobile device, and you'll have quick access to the digital catalog and the content within. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hooplaDigital.com, that's H-O-O-P-L-A digital.com, or you can download the Hoopla app to your mobile device to enjoy content on your mobile device. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library materials or services, feel free, of course, to drop in. We'd love to see you. You are also welcome to go the traditional route and just give us a call. The library's telephone number is the same. It's been for years, area code 607-936-3713. It's the same number we had many years ago when we were the Corning Public Library. Additionally, you can connect with the library via social media the library has a presence on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. They are fun and full of cool content. We've got the Book Club for Adults blog, which is pretty much what it sounds like, information on the monthly adult book club. The Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog. Creation Stationery, the companion blog for our makerspace, for all those creative types out there. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which is also where you'll find, once a week, the posts of this video series. And briefly, here are references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.